Mimi, and her mad mad world of fashion. She'd like to teach the world to sing, and even while she's singing, this doll shows off her wacky round the world take on national costumes. Let's travel the globe with this fashionable 1970s songbird. She might not have been the world's first singing doll, but Mimi certainly had the biggest ambitions. Spurred on by the global phenomenon of Coca-Cola's 1971 theme tune, I'd like to teach the world to sing, in perfect harmony, Remco rapidly brought this doll to the marketplace. Using the groundbreaking TV ad, with its hilltop location and a panoramic sweep of multicultural youth as inspiration, Mimi was set for international travel. Eschewing phrase books, or any kind of regular communication, this doll used the language of song to communicate. Let's take a look at the ad that inspired the creation of Mimi. I'd like to buy the world a home, and furnish it with love. Grow apple trees and honeybees, and so white turtle doves. I'd like to teach the world to sing, sing with me. The basic doll came complete with four mini records, song sheets and a stand. She sang her own versions of I'd Like to Teach. In English, French, German, Greek, Polish, Hebrew, Spanish, and Italian, by inserting the records into a battery-operated player inside the doll's chest cavity. She wore a Courage-influenced world traveler outfit with a Johnny Tam O'Shanter. As Remco pointed out, Mimi knows no boundaries. Only the brotherhood of song. But the outfits were the thing. Available separately and beautifully made, these were a real 70s spin on national costume. And if you hadn't heard enough of Mimi's dulcet tones, each one included two more records with local folk tunes in both English and the country's own language. To help you get in the swing of things, there were further song sheets for hours of sing-along fun. Only six costumes were manufactured. Despite the inclusion of French and Greek in the basic doll's repertoire, these countries' outfits never came about. It's interesting to speculate what the designers might have done for these costumes, based on their other interpretations. Spain, quite sensibly, is channeling Balenciaga. Matadora Gogo. Mimi's dress to kill for her trip to Spain. The creatively named Style 3502, came complete with a stylish hat and low hill pumps. Scotland could be by a juvenile Vivian Westwood by way of Robin Hood and Sherwood Forest. Mimi heads for the Highlands, though that mini kilt is unlikely to ward off chill Scottish winds. Style 3504 was packaged with four songs as a bonus, this time all in English. Flow Gently, Loch Lomond, Doa Deer, Do Ray Me, and Annie Laurie, were on the records and song sheets. Israel has something of Yves Saint Laurent about it, in one of his more flowing, voluminous moments. 70s Stripes. A novel take on Israeli costume. This outfit included the songs Haba Nagila and Make My Living in a Sandy Lane, in both English and Hebrew. The outfit is Style 3503. La Dolce Vita, Style 3505, resplendent in Italy's national colors. The boxed outfit contained records and song sheets for He's Got the Whole World in His Hands and O oh Sole Mio, as sung by Mimi in both Italian and English. Crossing a Vatican City Guard with a Venetian Carnival, Italy has a surprisingly militaristic look. As does Poland, which is nowhere near the lavishly embroidered peasant blouse and dirndl combo we might have expected. Cape Capers in Poland, wearing style 3506. This time Mimi masters Polish to sing Little Brown Jug, and click your heels. Perhaps only Germany offers the most predictable approach, a highly detailed ensemble with fine pin tucks, and plenty of embellishments, not least the Edelweiss trimmed waistcoat. The hills are alive, a two-ton terrific Mimi treats the music lovers of Germany to her renditions of Billy Boy and Der Lindenbaum in German and English. The outfit is style 3507. As it says on the box, she's youth, she's life, she's Mimi.